So now we've talked a bit about using state elements, let's talk about how we actually build them. How do we build a circuit that remembers a value? So the most basic circuits that remember a value are called SRAM, or static random access memory. Static means it keeps the value all by itself. So it needs power to do this, but once you have power, the circuit will keep its value. So let's see how an SRAM cell works. The basic idea is here you have a feedback loop. So we talked about feedback loops being bad, but we have a feedback loop that keeps the value in place. So we've got an inverter here, so if there's a zero on the input, it'll be one on the output, and we're gonna wire that up to another inverter going the opposite way. So here we've got a feedback loop. It's going back and, around, back and forth around and around. So let's say what happens here. If we have a zero coming into this inverter, it's gonna give us a one out, which means we have a one going into this inverter and a zero going out, that zero goes back around and so it keeps that value here. So the output of this is gonna be one. This is gonna hold the value as long as the electricity is turned on. Obviously if the electricity is turned off, these inverters stop working and the values go away. So in this case, we've got this feedback, the value is going around and around and that holds the value in the SRAM cell. So this is the most basic sort of memory. It's called static random access memory or SRAM. So how do we write into this? It's pretty clear it'll keep the value, but how do we put in a new value? So here's a circuit for how we put in a new value. We have a switch here. This is what's known as a pass gate, and it allows it when the switch is turned on that a new value can come in. So if we have a new value out here and we turn the switch on, that new value can go into the circuit. And now we've got a one going in. We had a zero before. If this one is strong enough, it'll overwrite that one. Now the inverter will invert the one. We'll get a zero, zero, one, and we'll have written in a new value into the, into the SRAM. Now when we turn off the latch, then we can't write in a new value and the value will be stored in there. So when you look at this cell here, you should ask yourself, what's the difference between the input and the output? Well, here I drew the output on this side and the input on that side, but they're both the same. The only difference between the input and the output is one's inverted from the other. So you can get either the same value out or the inverted value out just as easily. There's another subtle thing I mentioned here, and this isn't very important for this class, but I want you to think about this in general. When I write a value in here, the value I write in has to be strong enough to overcome this inverter. This inverter is trying to output one value, and I'm trying to force a new value into it. So you've got to think about it. These circuits are got to be very carefully designed so that when I write in a value, it's strong enough to overwrite the value that's in there. So how do we use clocks with this circuit? So what we're going to talk about now is what's called a transparent latch, and you'll see why it's transparent. It's because things can go right through it, and not really in a good way. So here's our SRAM cell that's going to store a value, and here's our input, and we've got a switch on our input, and we're going to attach the clock to the switch. So now we've got a latch, a state element, which is controlled by the clock. So what happens? Well, when the clock is high, the input's going to go right through, and when the clock is low, the last value is going to be held. So here the clock is low, so the switch is open, so whatever value was in here before is going to be the output, and whatever inputs are going to be ignored because this switch is open. Now here's what happened when the clock is high, it's closed. We've got an input, in, we've got some values stored in here, but now the new input is going to go in and write over it, and we're going to change the output with our input. So by using the clock to control the switch before the latch, we've made a latch that only updates when the clock is high. So, but there's a problem. The clock always changes, sorry, the value always changes when the clock is high. So we could still have a feedback loop here, and whenever the clock was high, we'd have feedback. All we did was prevent having feedback when the clock was low. So why is the output changing when the clock high a problem? Well, as I just went through, it's because it allows this feedback. Whenever the clock is high, we can have the exact same feedback that we were having problems with before. So think about a counter. We need to make sure that the value doesn't feed back, and with this circuit here, it'll feed back whenever the clock is high. Now we're going to go ahead and fix that by creating something called an edge triggered or D flip-flop. This is something which only going to change its value on the clock edge, that is when the clock changes from low to high. So we only want to update when the clock goes from 0 to 1, and we're going to do this by putting a master-slave latch together. That is, we're going to take two of these transparent latches and put them together. So here's the first one, and here's the second one. Now we're going to hook up their switches a little bit differently. 
So this switch here is going to be hooked up to the clock signal, just as we had before. But this switch over here is going to be hooked up to the not clock signal, so the inverted version of the clock signal. So that means we're only going to be able to write into the first latch when the clock is low, and we're only going to take that data and move it to the second latch when the clock is high. So this is how we change the output only when the clock changes. So let's take a look at that. Let's say we have zero in the first latch, and it's zero in the second latch, and the output is going to be zero. So here's our input, we're going to set in zero, and our clock is zero. So now when the input is zero here, and the clock is zero, we can go right into the first latch, because this first switch here is not clock. So clock is zero, not clock is one, which means this switch will be closed, and we can write into the first latch. But we can't send this value to the second latch, because the switch here is on clock, which is zero, and so this switch is open. So when the clock is low, we can write into the first latch, but it doesn't go through to the second one. Now let's try changing our input and see what happens. When we change our input, clock is still zero. Change our input, we can still write into the first latch because this switch is closed. So we change the value of the first latch, but we don't change the value of the second latch because this switch is open. Now we're going to go from clock zero to clock one. So now the clock goes up to one. We still have our input as one. Now we can no longer write into the first latch because now clock is 1, so not clock is 0, and this switch is open. So we've got a value of 1 that we wrote in there before, but now this is going to go all the way to the last latch and is going to become our output. So what happened here was just what we wanted. The output changed when our clock went from 0 to 1. Now if clock is still 1 and we change our input to 0, well it can't write into the first latch, so the first latch is still going to be 1. We're still writing from the first latch to the second latch, so we're going to stay 1. So the input does not change when we did this. So this master-slave latch works in two steps. The data moves into the first latch when the clock is zero, just like a transparent latch, and then data moves to the second latch when the clock is one. This means the output does not change when the clock is high, because when the clock is high, we can't write the data into the first latch. So let's take a look at this. So here we go, we've got our clock in the first latch, when our clock is low, we can write into it because not clock equals 1. So now when clock becomes 1, the switches are opposite way around. So for clock 0, this switch was closed and this one was open. When clock is high, or 1, this switch opens and this one closes. So now we're transferring the data. So now whatever value we had in here is now going to go to the second latch and go to our output. But in this case, because this switch is open, the input is ignored. So how did we solve this problem with having the feedback in the transparent latch? Well, we had two latches, and the two latches allow us to only change the output when the clock changes, and this prevents feedback.